Multicollinearity is a set of problems that can arise in multiple regression settings, and it has to do with when two or more of the regressors, the x variables, are closely related to one another. And it really comes in two flavors. There's perfect multicollinearity and imperfect multicollinearity. The perfect form is when one regressor or more is an exact linear combination of the other regressors. For example, x1 is equal to 2 times x2 plus 3. That's a serious problem. In fact, it's a fatal flaw for running a regression, and it usually indicates that you did something wrong. And it's fairly easy to fix in many cases. Imperfect multicollinearity, multicollinearity refers to a case when two or more of the regressors are highly correlated with each other, but not perfectly so. So we're going to deal with these in turn. First of all, the case of perfect multicollinearity. This often arises when you make a mistake setting up the regression. And one sort of common and well-known way this can happen is the so-called dummy variable trap. So what's an example? A simple example would be you're estimating an earnings regression. So you've got the y variable is the earnings of individuals, and then a set of x variables. And maybe you want to include a control for gender. So you add in a dummy or binary variable for female, so that's equal to 1 if the person's a female and 0 if they're a male. And then you make the mistake, which is the classic dummy variable trap. And you add an additional gender variable that's for males. And so this is going to be equal to 1 if the person's male and 0 if they're female. Now, you can see, first of all, that these two uh, variables are completely linearly related to each other. The male variable is always going to be simply equal to 1 minus the female variable, right? So if, uh, if female is 1, male is equal to 1 minus 1 or 0, and vice versa. And consequently, they contain exactly the same information. So what's going to happen if you include them both? Well, if you include both dummies in the regression, it's clearly redundant. They're telling you exactly the same information, although just in sort of flipped mathematical form. And as it turns out, the regression simply cannot calculate two different coefficients in this case. In most regression software, one or the other dummy variable is simply going to be dropped, and you'll see it's left blank. There won't be an estimate of the slope. Now, why is that? There's a mathematical reason having to do with uh, basically something similar to dividing by zero, but essentially the idea is it doesn't make sense to try to come up with a separate male and female effect at the same time because one is exactly the same information as the other except the inverse. In general, when we use dummy variables, we use them to capture categories. So, for example, gender or racial categories, or locational categories. If you have k categories that you're trying to capture with dummy variables for some characteristic, say ethnicity, in general you need to include k minus 1 dummy variables to capture that in the regression. In fact, if you have k categories and you include k dummy variables, then you've exhausted all the possibilities, and in fact, you are going to end up with a case of perfect multicollinearity. In our gender case, k was 2, and we only need k minus 1, that is one dummy variable. Either male or female will do. Let's look at a slightly more uh, complicated case, but uh, it shows it just as easily. That is regions. So suppose you wanted to control in your regression for the region that somebody lives in, so here I've got four individuals in my sample, and there are four regions of the country, northeast, midwest, south, and west. So let's try to capture the region that a person lives in using dummy variables or binary variables. So here I've got a northeast binary variable, a midwest, and a south. Person 1 lives in the northeast, so they'll get a 1 for northeast. Obviously they don't live in the Midwest, so they get a zero there. They don't live in the South, so they get a zero there. Person two lives in the Midwest, so they're not in the Northeast. They are in the Midwest, they get a one. They're not in the South. And the person in the South gets zero, zero, and one for the South dummy. Now you might say, well what about the person in the West? Don't we need a dummy variable to capture their case? 
And the answer is no. If we have the other three and there's only four possible regions, then the person who lives in the West is perfectly identified by having zeros on all of those. Now, if we were to include a binary variable for West along with the others, we'd fall into the dummy variable trap. It's like adding the male dummy variable when we've already got female. So again, if we have k categories, in this case 4, we only need k minus 1 or 3 binary variables to capture all the possibilities and to include the last dummy variable would lead to the regression being unable to estimate all four. And as I said, typically most regression procedures will um, just drop one of the variables. Now, perfect multicollinearity can arise for a variety of other reasons. Some of those are talked about in the Stock and Watson textbook. Uh, one thing that can happen, and you might not might not be obvious when you do it, would be suppose you include just a female dummy. You don't include a male, so you're not falling into the dummy variable trap, but you've got a sample that for some reason you've restricted to only males, to men. So everybody in that sample is going to take a value of zero on the female dummy variable. Well, that's also actually going to lead to perfect multicollinearity, and the reason may not be so obvious, but in fact, in the multiple regression, the constant term, that is the intercept, is included in the data set as a series of ones, a whole column of ones. And the zeros on that female dummy variable, when you've only got men in the sample, is perfectly collinear with that column of ones. Consequently, that regression will fail to estimate a male effect, because how can, or a female effect, because how can you estimate it when you've only got men? There's no contrast to look at. Usually these problems are easy to fix, although sometimes they're not so obvious, but if uh, in this case we would just drop the female dummy out of that regression, we're only looking at men. Let me turn quickly to imperfect multicollinearity. And this is a case where the variables are not perfect linear combinations of each other, but the two or more regressors are highly, though not perfectly, correlated. Now, the main uh, consequence of imperfect multicollinearity is it tends to blow up the standard error estimates on your coefficients. So that's uh, what happens. And as a consequence, you get very large confidence intervals, and it becomes hard to uh, reject the null hypothesis that any given estimate is zero. Now, there's mathematical reasons that this happens, but what's really going on? In essence, intuitively, think about what the regression is trying to do. The computer in its brain is trying to distinguish the separate effects of two x variables, mathematically, that are very highly correlated with each other. It's almost like they're measuring the exact same thing. In that case, sorting out the individual contribution of the separate variables becomes mathematically challenging. And as a consequence, the estimates are going to be very uh, imprecise. Uh, the example given in your textbook is suppose you're doing the school district test score regression and you want to account for the percentage of English language learners in the school district so you put in that variable it makes sense but then you also want to look at the effect of having recent immigrants in the area now it's likely to be the case that districts that have a large percentage of English language learners also have a large percentage of recent immigrants that's the main reason why somebody is an English language learner uh, in most US communities. Consequently, these two variables are likely to be very highly correlated with one another. In the regression, then, it's going to be very hard to sort out whether the test score is being mostly affected by the English language effect or the recent immigrant effect. Those two things in the data are very hard to sort out. And as a consequence, both of those coefficients are likely to have very large standard errors. Now then you might make the mistake of concluding from t-tests that these two variables don't matter uh, when it comes to determination of test scores. But maybe together they do matter, it's just that we can't separate out which one is having a bigger or smaller effect. So that leads to the question of what to do. I already mentioned that for perfect multicollinearity we can av usually avoid that if we take sufficient care in setting up our regression, avoiding things like the dummy variable trap, etc. Imperfect multicollinearity, such as the case I just mentioned with the English language learners and the percentage of recent immigrants, must often be lived with. Uh, 
and in fact you simply may often be unable to distinguish the separate effects, say an immigration effect as opposed to an English language learner effect. Now, does that mean you have to live with the idea that you can't tell whether those things matter at all? Well, we can often test a joint hypothesis that one or at least one of those variables is non-zero to see whether they have some significant effect when included together in the regression. And that uh, involves a test statistic that's usually called the F-test in regression analysis, and we'll talk about that in another segment. But if we put both those variables in the regression, we could still judge whether they're having a significant predictive effect, uh, even if we can't really sort out the separate parts.